we need to create a country which is self-sufficient in terms of employment, it is not only done on taxation. Other countries gave in incentives on the issue of cost of production, electricity, easy way of doing business. So if you are told you are saying that only the, we, discourage, we discourage new new investors who are coming to do things in this country because of the, the issue is only taxation as incentives, then we are wrong. We need to go back and understand on the products that are like pharmaceutical, agricultural products, agricultural equipment need to be checked very well. And that's why I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, that today we are in a level that we, are, we, are, we need to understand that it's a, it's a, right, it's a high time we call a cat uh, and we don't call a dog a cat. If this bill is punitive, let it be taken back to the public who demonstrated yesterday, who are still asking for answers and questions. When why are you saying you have deleted some and you are not giving them an opportunity to see? Mr. Speaker, like I said before, can we ask our, ourselves outside because we are living in this country? If you go to Mamamboga, if you go to, to everyone, everyone is complaining, everyone is complaining that we have pushed the Kenyan people to the corner. And that was say we are, we, are, we are just, we are just, we are just be, be begging from our colleagues, if possible, let us not, let us not approve this finance bill 2024. And for the sake of the people of Kajado South constituency, whom I represent, if you put in Ashita, they might also be called villagers. And I'm also from a boy from the village. If at all we are going by the voices of the Kenyans, I stand to say because of the people of Kajado South constituency, I don't support this bill. And for the sake of the, of the G, G uh, the, Gen, the Gen Z, I also don't support that bill. And also, Mr. Speaker, I donate my one minute uh, to Mr. Wanjala. Thank you. Order. Under what standing order are you donating? Kimani Ichungwa. Kimani Ichungwa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, I rise to support this bill and the committee's report together with all its amendments, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity first to thank the Committee on Finance for the great work they did, especially in listening to the people of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, as I said yesterday, this committee did indeed listen to the people of Kenya. And all, if you go through the compodium of amendments that the committee has proposed, you will realize that they listened to Kenyans from the cost of bread, or rather the VAT that was proposed on bread, to the border border sector, to the eco levies on diapers, on sanitary towels, and all the other things, Honorable Speaker, that Kenyans said might be harmful to them or would be detrimental to their well being in terms of the cost of living, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me also take this opportunity to point out to Kenyans because I know all these members have been bombarded with messages from Kenyans asking them to reject this finance bill. Honorable Speaker, I saw yesterday when it became clear and apparent that there were measures that have been taken having listened to Kenyans, a number of them started saying, please do not edit, reject. Let me tell them we never edit bills. What we do is to propose amendments, adopt those amendments, and the consequential bill that will be passed in the Committee of the Whole is what then becomes the Act of Parliament that we have the force of law as the new operative law of the Finance Act of 2024-2025. Therefore, let me just plead with Kenyans to be patient with us, to allow us to do what they charge us to do as their elected representatives. And Honorable Speaker, I say that because I know and I know many of these members, including myself, we have suffered a lot of uh, harassment. And I was asking the leader of minority this morning whether he has suffered the same. 
and he told me his phone is worse. Many of these members of parliament today, Honorable Speaker, you cannot reach them on their phones because they have blocked their phones, including WhatsApp. But this is the beauty of our democracy, Honorable Speaker. And the beauty of this democracy, Honorable Speaker, is that Kenyans express themselves and we respond to, their, to what they are saying. And in responding to what they have told us, that is why many of the amendments that you find in the committee's report that touch on the issues to do with bread, border border, sanitary towers, Honorable Speaker, and I had this morning somebody asking whether we have capacity to manufacture adequate sanitary towers and diapers in this country, Honorable Speaker. And I want to confirm to the country that we have more than adequate capacity. Honorable Speaker, if you get data from the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Honorable Speaker, we are stripping the daily demand, for instance, for sanitary, sanitary towels. And I mention sanitary towels because, Honorable Speaker, I am a father to girls. Two of them who are now turning to their teenage years. One is 17, the other one is 14. And I have seen these members, someone was showing me a very derogatory message sent to, to him being asked whether his wife doesn't do what I don't know what, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, I am saying this because if you look at the data from the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, it is clear that out of four established companies who are manufacturing sanitary pads, for instance, that is Interconsumer Products Limited, Promed Limited, African Cloth Limited, Sai Pharmaceutical Limited, and a fifth one coming up, Sunda Kenya Limited. The four companies' production output is 148 million pieces a month. Our local demand is 135 million pieces a month. Honorable Speaker, when the eco levy was introduced on sanitary pads and diapers, Kenyans spoke to the Finance Committee and said they would become expensive. And Honorable Speaker, the Finance Committee has responded by imposing both VAT and that eco levy on finished imported products, including imported sanitary pads and diapers that are coming from countries, and I do not want to mention the countries, Honorable Speaker, whose safety, how hygienic they are, whether they meet the required health standards, we cannot ascertain, Honorable Speaker. And it is important for us as parents to be responsible citizens and parents to protect our teenage girls, our mothers, our sisters, our wives, by ensuring that the sanitary pads that they use are safe, they are secure, they are hygienic. Honorable Speaker, it is only fair also to protect our growing manufacturing industry. I watched Honorable Speaker when the Kenya Association of Manufacturers presented their, their uh, memoranda to the Committee on Finance. And they truly pleaded with the Committee on Finance to protect our local manufacturing industry, Honorable Speaker. When then we are told, Honorable Speaker, that imposing excise duty, imposing an equal levy, imposing VAT on imported finished products in order to protect our manufacturing industry, in order to ensure that we have jobs, jobs in being created, Honorable Speaker, for the thousands of youth who today, Honorable Speaker, are being misled that the only thing that these Honorable Members can do is to reject this finance bill instead of fixing it, fixing what is wrong in the finance bill. Honorable Speaker, this bill had 65 crosses at inception when it came to this House. I have listened to Kenyans, Honorable Speaker, yes, uh, and engaged a number of them. Order, Honorable Majority Leader, under what standing order? 83. Pardon? And, Speaker, according to the oxygen principle, Under what standing order according to standing? the oxygen principle, Speaker, procedural technicalities that order, do not override Honorable substantive Babo justice. Wino, order. You are here in the morning, I said, you understand a point of order, I'll allow you, tell me which standing order is being infringed, then I allow you. You said 83. You are out of order. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Go on, Majority Leader. 
Honorable Speaker, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I was asking. Order, Babo, you know, you should know what you want to say, my son. Because you stood up and said, standing order 83. It doesn't apply. Then somebody whispers to you, 91, you say 91. Go on, uh, Majority Leader. Take your seat. Honorable Speaker, I was asking, what is so wrong with us protecting our manufacturing sector in this country, Honorable Speaker? What is so wrong with us ensuring that we are creating jobs within our own economy instead of creating jobs in other countries, Honorable Speaker? Because when we say that we do not levy excise duty on imported finished products, whether they are finished and fully assembled border borders or motorcycles, Honorable Speaker, we are creating and exporting jobs out of this country into those economies where we want to import those finished products from. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I want to speak to the young people in the streets. The young people, Honorable Speaker, who have been mobilized in colleges and universities around our country to send mem uh, members messages of rejecting this finance bill. This finance bill is about protecting yourselves as our children. It is about creating jobs for you as our children. It is about ensuring that the future of our economy is secure, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we will only secure the economy for future generations if we make sure that we nurture the growing manufacturing sector in our economy, Honorable Speaker, vis-a-vis -vis exporting jobs to other countries, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the finance every year that we pass a finance act in this House, it has a three- or two-fold objective, Honorable Speaker. Top among them, other than re revenue, is also to ensure, Honorable Speaker, that we create jobs within our economy for us to be able to expand our tax base. So that, Honorable Speaker, those of us who feel overburdened, especially the working class in this country, because we are paying taxes and very many other non-taxpayers non or Kenyans who are not paying taxes, are depending on us to ensure that we are able to create jobs create more income earners who can pay taxes so that we share the burden of taxation more evenly and more fairly, Honorable Speaker. And that is part of the prime objective of this Finance Act of 2024, to ensure that we raise revenue, we protect our manufacturing sector, Honorable Speaker, we create jobs, and more importantly, Honorable Speaker, we deliver services to the people of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. I am glad, as the President said yesterday, Honorable Speaker, that the conversation in this country now has changed. We are no longer yes, debating in this House. Order, Honorable Speaker, order. these interjections, yes. I, I find them unnecessary. Order, I think yes, Babu Awino thinks we are outside uh, Central Police Station. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we cannot sit here. What standing order are you on? 91. 91. Honorable Speaker, why is it that it's, no, it's only my standing orders that you are confirming, Honorable Speaker? The rest you are giving. <laughs> Baba, we know everybody has been subjected to the same treatment. What I want to say is very important and urgent, Honorable Speaker. Yes. <laughs> yes. What is out of order? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I've heard the submissions made by Honorable, Kim, uh, Honorable Ichungwa, and I want to say that at first, I thought that they were important and detailed. But I've just realized that the important parts are not detailed and the detailed parts are not important. He's, he's talking about manufacturing. Honorable Speaker, I want to educate Honorable What Ichungwa. is out of order? This is, where I'm coming pursuing to. A argument. this is where I'm coming to, Honorable Speaker, on matters economics. Because Honorable Ichungwa is claiming that if we increase taxes for imports. It, that is what he's saying, that if we increase taxes for imports, imported goods, then we will give an opportunity for industries, local industries to grow, which literally, debate now. which is normally true. But in our situation as a country, Honorable Speaker, we are going to promote what we call foreign absorption.
say this and this and this, when in fact the facts are this and this, or contrary to this standing order. You've shot up on my permission, and you're pursuing a very healthy argument on the bill that has no relationship with what the member on the floor was saying, because that is your argument, that's his argument. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for that guidance and protection. Honorable Speaker, I was saying many of the amendments that have been proposed by the Finance Committee in a big way cure the numerous concerns that Kenyans had over this finance bill. And therefore, that's why I want to plead with this Honorable House, let us do what is right. I know there are those who are tempted to do that which is popular. It is very popular to join street demonstrations to be seen as a hero rescuing people from police stations when they are arrested out of whatever they are arrested on in the streets. But as a leader, and we are here as leaders, Honorable Speaker, as a leader and as leaders, Honorable Speaker, we must do that what is right. And Honorable Speaker, when this administration came to power two year, less, about two years ago, our fiscal deficit as a percentage, as a percentage of GDP was at 6.7%. We were projected to borrow 1.1 trillion shillings, Honorable Speaker, in the first year of this administration. That today, Honorable Speaker, with the budget that this House adopted two or three weeks ago, has gone down from 6.7 to 3.4 percent. That is on account of sound economic policies. It is on account of doing what is right that, rather than what is popular. Honorable Speaker, I know many of these members have been intimidated around the country, being told, Uta Tupata 2027, or you get us in 2027. I want to give you the highest assurance what the people of Kenya will judge you against is whether or not you are able to deliver on the promises and the pledges you made to them on delivery of It shall be schools. For the lives on debt, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, two years ago, we were not just surviving on, pub, on borrowed money. Honorable Speaker, we were on the verge of defaulting on our international and national domestic debt obligations, Honorable Speaker. From last year, end of last year, Honorable Speaker, it became clear, not just to us within the country, but to the world at large, that Kenya was never and was not about to default on its debt obligations, Honorable Speaker. That is why, Honorable Speaker, today, unlike two years ago when the price of Funga was at a high of 260 shillings, today the price of Funga is at a low of 100 shillings. Courtesy of the right economic policies and not what is populist. G gave him two minutes to wind up. I have uh, pardon? I have 15, they had time to stand and the interjections. Give, I'll give him an additional three minutes. Yes, Wamshomba, hold the time. Wamshomba, what is your point of order? And our, under what standing order? Do you have the mic? There's one next to you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise under standing order number 90. As a member who has peculiar, pecuniary interests on matters sanitary towers, as a user, because I'm a user, do I qualify? Can you repeat? That you are. Go I ahead. am standing on the strength of standing order number 90. Yes. As a member who has, who wishes to speak on this matter of sanitary towers as a user. That's yourself. Yes. You are out of order. <laughs> Take your seat. If, 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 if you had in the morning the Honorable Tender Molo, although he did the right thing wrongly, 
when you challenge somebody, under, take your seat, understanding order 91, you're challenging the member on the floor who has pecuniary interest, not on the basis of your own pecuniary interest. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I was saying two years ago, UNGA, when we speak about the cost of living, UNGA was at a high of 260 shillings. Today, UNGA is at a low of about 100 shillings, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, our exchange rate, the Kenya shilling to the dollar, Almost a year ago, it was at a high of 162 shillings. Today, it is at a low of 128 and still going down, Honorable Speaker. Courtesy of the right economic policies, courtesy of pursuing what is right rather than, rather than what is popular, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in the past, we have suffered what was described as state capture, Honorable Speaker. This bill, Honorable Speaker, in a big way addresses the question of state capture. Honorable Speaker, there are companies in this country that have survived largely on what is called tax expenditure and manipulating the system around tax expenditure, Honorable Speaker, especially around the question of VAT refunds. This bill, Honorable Speaker, is addressing the loopholes that bedevil our country through people who are well connected, who use the system to beat tax, tax, the, the tax system, Honorable Speaker, exploiting tax refunds to make bigger profits for their companies, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, speaking to state capture, Honorable Speaker, we built an SGR uh, infrastructure over 10 years ago. You have one minute. You would be up. shocked today, Honorable Speaker, there are people who are still claiming tax deductions around buildings that were done with the SGR. This bill is bringing to an end, from the 1st of July, those deductions, courtesy of the SGR, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, I know there are people who are mobilized because they have been benefiting from the system, Honorable Speaker, hiding behind civil society, funding civil society, Honorable Speaker, and the civil society, Honorable Speaker, mobilizing negative propaganda against this bill. I want to implore our members, do what is right. Do what is good for the economy. Do what is good for your generation, your future generations, Honorable Speaker. What will secure our nation's economy? Not that. Your time is up. Nabi Nabuera. Nabi Nabuera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I want to raise a number of issues. Yes, uh, Mele Odiambo, what is the problem? The women are also here. Yes. I can see them. <laughs> M Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, yes, order, Nabi. Yes, Gichungo, what is the point of order? You know, Honorable Speaker, because Honorable Mili was not on record, you may not have heard what she said, but she said she wants to speak as a former user. Honorable Speaker, of, of sanitary items. What I did not understand whether it was uh, sanitary towels or diapers. Maybe she can clarify whether it's a sanitary towel or diapers. Nabi, order. Yes. Yes, uh, Honorable Junet, what is out of order? Hold Nabi's time. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you have heard clearly what the majority leader has said. He is asking under what cat category of women do Milio Diambo fall? Because she's claiming that she's a former user of sanitary parts. And in the finance bill, we are discussing sanitary parts, and we want to reduce the taxes. Is she going to benefit from that? Is she opposing or supporting, Mr. Speaker? Order, Mili, you don't need rocket science to understand what you said. I understood you clearly, and we don't want to engage in debate. Nabi Nabuera, continue. <laughs> th 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 thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> 
Mr. Speaker, this today I've had a lot of time to reflect on whether this country, we want to move it forward, we want to have it stagnant, or we want even to become rep repugnant. I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, because any progressive country, any progressive system, we should have started by looking at our 2023-2024 Act, Finance Act, and ask ourselves the question, has it served us well? Number two, we should have asked us, we intended to collect an, 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 a, a certain amount of money. Did it help us collect that money? Number three, what has been the business performance for the period that 2023-2024 covered? And finally, Mr. Speaker, we should ask ourselves, has the current Finance Act helped us to mobilize savings? What is our saving ratio as a country? Mr. Speaker, as I look at that and evaluate the 2023-2024 Finance Act, I return a performance ratio of 44%. With that kind of performance ratio, you cannot come up with another act, a, a, a bill, to repeal that act, which increases the number of taxes, the amount of taxes to the public. Because you have failed to collect over 300 billion. Mr. Speaker, whereas the chairman of the Finance Committee presented to us a report here, which looked progressive. Unfortunately, it fell short of curing the problems in this bill. What are the problems in this bill? Mr. Speaker, if you look at Schedule 4 and Schedule 3, then you return a no acceptance to this bill. One, if you look at the 10% duty on Kilinga, you are only improving the status of one business person. When you look at the duty on billet, you are improving the status of the same person. You cannot create a law that only ensures that one particular individual or one particular entity of business thrives at the expense of the others. Mr. Speaker, whereas, whereas one would want to forgive the drafters of this bill for imagining that if you removed tax or if you removed the standard towels that are locally manufactured, then you have cured the problem. It's lying. I've talked to my own daughters in the house. They tell me the standard towels they use are all imported. So in other words, when you see the... The, the young girls going to the streets and asking us whether was Inyeshe, they mean it. Because you are making their life un unbearable. Mr. Speaker, I want to pick on an issue here. And this issue is based on Schedule 4. If you look at all the taxes under Schedule 4, on telephone, on all those things there. They are meant to help improve businesses. Now, if we are leaving taxes on them, and already the business community is underperforming, how do we intend to raise money? If this country cannot mobilize savings, then we rather shut up and close, the, close it. I'm asking the drafters of this bill and the chairman, with due respect, if you wanted to help us as a country with all those changes you made, they were fundamental. Then the bill loses its original form. Then you should have withdrawn the bill and given us an, an, another bill. 
Mr. Speaker, I oppose. Doroth Ikiara. Doroth Ikiara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the outset, I say I support this bill. And Mr. Speaker, I was seated here in the House and I participated actively in passing the Budget and Appropriation Bill when it was presented before this House. Honorable Speaker, we did come up with a lot of issues because, Honorable Speaker, we promised Kenyans on very many pledges when we were being elected. And inside this House today, Honorable Speaker, each and every member did give pledges. And we know what that means, Honorable Speaker. We promised the electorates good roads. We promised them medicine in the hospital. We promised them proper education for their children. And Honorable Speaker, this informs us of where we are today as a country. Honorable Speaker, since Kenya faces both a physical deficit and a budget deficit, the finance bill serves as a key legislative tool for the government. It combines 11 new enhancing measures with expenditure rationalization as a strategy to manage and reduce these deficits. Honorable Speaker, Want to elevate your entertainment? Then add Showmax to your DSTV subscription at a discount. Showmax is not a TV channel. It's an on-demand video streaming service on Showmax.com. To add Showmax to your DSTV subscription, simply use the My DSTV app. Select Add Showmax. The app screen will display the discount you qualify for. Now you can enjoy exclusive shows and movies you won't find anywhere else. Add Showmax to elevate your entertainment. From Germany to your K24 TV screens. Get ready for the ultimate showdown of European football as 24 countries fight for one trophy. This time, the battle for glory reaches its peak.